Recoil has always been a major challenge in the history of firearms development. It not only affects shooting accuracy and rate of fire, but also increases the complexity of the structure. Although designers have come up with many ways to mitigate the effects of recoil, it is still impossible to achieve perfect results. However, in the history of firearms development, there was once a firearm that truly reduced the impact of recoil to a very low value, and that is the Douglas Recoilless Submachine Gun from Canada. The Douglas Submachine Gun was designed in the late 1960s, and the first prototype was delivered to the Canadian Army for testing in 1973. Although it was not adopted, it was still a technologically distinctive equipment. Today, we will briefly introduce it. The Douglas submachine gun is a lightweight weapon that can be held with one or both hands. It does not have a buttstock because it is easy to handle without one. The principle of achieving recoilless is not complicated. The bolt and barrel can move independently and the two components are connected by a spring. When the ammunition is fired, the pressure pushes the cartridge case to move the bolt, while the barrel moves forward. At this time, there is a gap between the bolt and the rear chamber of the barrel, and the spent cartridge case is ejected. Due to the action of the spring between the bolt and the barrel, they move back to re-engage after reaching a certain distance, and this re-engagement process is accompanied by the chambering of a new round. This principle is similar to early recoilless cannons with counterweights. The bolt acts as a counterweight during firing, greatly reducing the recoil. The Douglas submachine gun can be fired with one hand, which is why it is called a recoilless submachine gun. However, it does have recoil, but it uses a special structure to counteract most of the recoil's impact on the shooter. The impact when the ammunition is discharged still exists, so there is still a certain upward movement of the muzzle. The feeding structure of the Douglas submachine gun is another highlight. It does not use conventional magazines or drums, but a rotating cylinder similar to the Bison submachine gun. The 9x19mm bullets are arranged spirally inside the cylinder with a capacity of 50 rounds. The cylinder is inserted from above the grip at an angle. The cylinder itself does not have a spring component, and its feeding relies on the movement of the axis in the middle of the cylinder, driven by the backward movement of the bolt during firing, thereby completing a forward movement to push the ammunition. This specially designed feeding mechanism has its advantages. Its movement can counteract some of the force of the bolt movement and reduce the travel distance of the bolt. However, as the ammunition is consumed, the force required to complete one movement of the cylinder also decreases, which will inevitably affect the shooting of the firearm. The firing movement of the submachine gun also has a certain impact on its power. We know that although recoilless cannons are called cannons, their projectile velocity is far lower than that of conventional smoothbore cannons because the backward jet of gas reduces the chamber pressure. The Douglas submachine gun also has the same problem. The gas generated by the combustion of the bullet propellant pushes the bolt and barrel in the opposite direction during expansion, and the gradually increasing and opening space is not conducive to increasing the chamber pressure. Therefore, compared to similar firearms, its muzzle velocity may be lower. Such a structure may have a more pronounced impact if used in a rifle. After testing and comparison, the Canadian Army concluded that the Douglas recoilless submachine gun was less reliable compared to conventional submachine guns, and its innovations did not receive recognition. It is also difficult to find more information about this gun on the Internet.